Let us look at another example of seasonal influence in forecasting. The manager of Meerut Garden Center is making her annual purchasing plans for rakes, gloves and other gardening items. So there is this company uh, Meerut Garden Center which is in the business of selling items which are used for gardening purpose such as rakes, gloves, fertilizer etc. Now one of the items she stocks is quick grow which is a liquid fertilizer. The sales of this item are seasonal with peaks in the spring, summer and fall months. The quarterly demand in cases for the past two year has been provided to us. So in year one for the first quarter the demand for quick grow liquid fertilizer was 30 cases. For second quarter the demand was 370 cases, third quarter 290 cases and fourth quarter 180 cases. For the second year the first quarter demand was 50 cases, second quarter demand was 420 cases, third quarter was 330 cases and fourth quarter was 210 cases. The total demand for year 1 was 870 cases whereas for year 2 it was 1010 cases. Now if the expected sales for quick grow are 1150 cases for year 3. So for year 3 the total expected sales is 1100 50 cases. Now we have to use the multiplicative seasonal method to prepare a forecast for each quarter of the third year. So we have to find out how much is the expected sales for each of the quarters of the third year. Now basically here you know the manager can actually purchase 1150 cases of quick grow at the very beginning of the year but that is not a very good decision because she'll be locking all the money that she has at the beginning of the year whereas if she knew how much is going to be the expected sales of the liquid fertilizer for each quarter then she might as well do the purchasing just before that quarter. So for example whatever is the expected sales for the fourth quarter she can buy that probably in the third quarter and the money can be kept in the bank for the first two quarters and she can gain interest on that. But if she buys in the beginning then of course she is losing that interest. So similarly for all the other quarters as well. So let's see how we can find out the expected sales for each of these quarters. So this is the information that has been provided to us. Now as mentioned in the example the sales of the fertilizer peak during the spring summer and fall seasons and as we can see the sales are high for the second, third and fourth quarter as compared to the first quarter. So first quarter is generally winter so that's why the sales is less for the first quarter. Now here each quarter is one season. So let's move to step number one. So step number one says that calculate the average demand per season. 
So here we'll first take year number one and for the first year we have four seasons and the total is 870 so the average is 870 divided by 4 so this comes out to 217.5 similarly for year 2 1010 divided by 4 so this is 252.5 so basically this is the average demand per season that means if there was no seasonal influence and the total demand was 870 and it is evenly distributed amongst all the quarters then each quarter would have a demand of 217.5 for the first year and 252.5 for the second year now let's move to step number two Now step number two says divide the actual demand for a season by the average demand per season. So basically, let's take quarter 1 for year 1. 30 is the actual demand. So we have to divide 30 by the average demand for year 1, which is 217.5. Similarly, for second quarter year 1, 370 divided by 217.5 and so on. And for year 2, we have to do the similar thing. 50 divided by 252.5. 420 divided by 252.5, 330 divided by 252.5 and so on. So let's do these calculations. So this is the data that we arrive at after these calculations. So 30 divided by 217.5 which is equal to 0 0.138, 370 divided by 217.5 which is equal to 1.7 and so on. Similarly for year 2. 50 divided by 252.5 which is equal to 0.198 420 divided by 252.5 which is equal to 1.66 and so on. So let's now move to step number 3. Step number 3 is to calculate the average seasonal index for each season. Calculate the average seasonal index for each season. So in step number two, the calculation that we performed gave us the seasonal index for each quarter of each year. So we got a seasonal index for year one for the first quarter as well as another seasonal index for year two for quarter one. Now in step number three what we need to do is we'll take the average of these numbers for each of the quarters so that we get a seasonal index which can be then used to find out the expected sales for each of the quarters of the third year. So here what we'll do is we'll take the two numbers for each quarter and divide it by two to find the average seasonal index. So here I've calculated the average seasonal index for each of the quarters. So here let's understand what this means. So what this means is that if let's say the total demand is 4 then the average demand is 1 each for each of the quarters now if the average demand is 1 for quarter number 1 then because of the seasonal influence the 
expected sales is going to be 0.168 similarly if the average for second quarter is 1 then the seasonal influence will make the forecast or the expected sales for second quarter as 1.68 so this is nothing but the relative number as compared to 1 so with this understanding let's move to step number 4 so step number 4 says that now we need to calculate each seasons forecast for next year so we need to calculate the forecast or the expected sales for each of the quarters of year number three now we have already been given that the total expected sales for the third year is 1150 cases so now let's try to calculate the expected sales for each of the quarters for the third year let's first take the quarter number one so for the first quarter we know that the average seasonal index is 0.168 that means if the average demand for the first quarter is one then due to the seasonal influence the expected sales becomes 0.168 so now based on this figure of 1150 let's find out what is the equivalent of these one that is the average demand so 1150 divided by 4 so this is equal to 287.5 so now the average demand for each of the quarters for third year is 287.5 so for the first quarter if the average is 1 then the seasonal influence makes the expected sales for first quarter as 0.168 so if the average demand is 287.5 then what does the seasonal influence convert this into so if it is 1 then the expected sales is 0 0.168 so if it is 287.5 then how much so cross multiplication x multiplied by 1 is equal to 0 0.168 multiplied by 287.5 so this is equal to 48.3 similarly for second quarter the seasonal index is 1.68 so if the average is 1 then the seasonal index is 1.68 so if the average is 287.5 then how much so x is equal to 1.68 multiplied by 27.5 so this is equal to 483 next for third quarter the seasonal index is 1.32 so for 1 it is 1.32 so for 287.5 it is how much so x is equal to 1.32 multiplied by 287.5 this is equal to 379.5 now for the fourth quarter the seasonal index is 0.829 so for 1 it is 0 0.829 287.5 is how much so x is equal to 0 0.829 multiplied by 287.5 and this is equal to 238.3 so for the first quarter the expected sales is 48.3 for the second quarter it is 483 
for third quarter it is 379.5 and fourth quarter 238.3 of course we can round these off to get the exact numbers so these are the expected sales for each of the quarters for the third year now as you can see this also follows the same expected peak demands during the second third and fourth quarter which is the spring summer and fall season